So what's next? It's a question we plan to answer regularly on a variety of topics, but tonight it means what's going to happen next with Obamacare. For more than a year, Donald Trump has vowed to repeal and to replace that unpopular law. Now he says he may keep some elements of it in place. Either way, though, President Obama's signature law isn't working as promised, and virtually everyone agrees on that. The question is why, and what does it mean? Joining us now is Obamacare architect Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel. Dr. Emanuel, thanks a lot for joining us. I appreciate it. It nice seems to, to be me that, here. that Obamacare is the biggest piece of social reorganization passed in my lifetime, and yet it has never, so far as I know, had majority support or never a strong majority of support from beginning until now. Starting well, just at the Tucker, very beginning, shouldn't, shouldn't let, you get, let, I've never seen a poll that suggests the majority of Americans support Obamacare, so shouldn't you get buy-in from the public before reorganizing their health care? The, the public likes many of the provisions. You poll, yeah, keeping some, your sure. child on your parents' plan till mm -hmm. age 26, almost 80% of the public likes that. Yeah, no pre-existing disease exclusions, almost 75% yeah. of the public likes right. that. Uh, closing right. the donut hole for Medicare beneficiaries. 75% of the people like that. You're, you're, they you're right about like it. I'm, I'm very aware of, of that. But The but only not. provision. Did Shouldn't Tucker, you get people to buy fix. in first? Wait, did you ask me a question? I'm answering I the did. question. Yes. Okay, so let me answer the question, please. A little respect. Go ahead. Uh, they, uh, the only provision that scores under 50% is the mandate, and people haven't mm. understood that if you want no pre-existing con uh, disease condition exclusion, you have to have a mandate. Those are inextricably okay. linked. So the public, of course, would like their cake and eat it too, but you right. cannot well, have well, both of those. Before you continue to patronize the public, let me, just, let me just make one thing really clear. So the poorest segment of our society is young people. In fact, this generation is the poorest generation of its age in three generations. They're the poorest. And yet we're forcing them to buy into the system to subsidize the health care of the old and the sick, who are also the richest segment of our population. Why is that fair, and why would you expect them to like it? Well, first of all, young kids uh, are subsidized in the Obamacare plan. If they don't make above 100% of poverty, they go on Medicaid, and they get almost cost-free health care. And if they are uh, uh, on the low end of income, they are very heavily subsidized to get health insurance. They're not spending a lot of money for peace of mind and protection. And I think that is a good deal. One of the reasons I'm so passionate... But they, so don't, passionate, but me, but they don't, one, think, it's, but they again, don't think it's a Tucker, good deal, are you going to let me finish the mic? Well, one just, of the reasons I'm, I'm so I'm passionate about health reform... They don't reform, think it's a good deal. That's why you're trying to force them to do it, right? Am I missing something? I just try to get a straight answer from you. You're trying to force them to do something they don't want to do. You're telling them it's a good deal, but they don't believe it's a good deal. Why don't they believe that? Yeah, and, a, uh, and a lot of them haven't uh, explored what the deal is. They've heard your rhetoric that it's not a good deal, and they haven't actually seen. Most of them, if they're not earning Wait, so a lot of money... so you're saying that I've convinced people that Obamacare isn't as great as it really is? Is that what you're saying? Oh, there's certainly been a lot of uh, very bad rhetoric and very bad attacks on it, rather than give it its fair shake. Are you um, going to blame right-wing talk radio? Think, I do think we can actually uh, make the deal better. I've made proposals out there how to adjust it. You know, if you were a business and you launched a major initiative, you would revise it as unintended consequences occur, as you see that there right, are problems. Right. The, the problem here is Congress hasn't allowed us to make those uh, mid-course adjustments okay, but, me, for six okay, years. I, and that's I'm, I'm a serious your problem with the I, I get it. of the machine. I get it. I'm are you going to let me points. finish an answer? Well, or I, you keep I, interrupting I, I me have, like I'm not no, your guest. I've actually, Treat me I've like your guest. I've let you finish. Let me just say you this, didn't though, let me finish. to add to what you said, the president began this with a joint speech to a joint session of Congress in 2009 in which he said, Obamacare will be the end of the discussion of how to organize health care in this country. I was sitting right there and he said that. He promised us that it would be perfect upon arrival. Shouldn't someone at least acknowledge that that wasn't true before we move on to the next iteration of Obamacare? Are we just going to keep Excuse lying and hope me, nobody but that notices? Is totally, that is totally untrue statement. The president never thought it was going to be perfect upon arrival. Do you want me to read you we the quote? We live in a democracy. No legislation is perfect. All of I'm us who worked on it knew that when it was up. finished, I am there were to be issues the last. we would have to address down the line that we okay. would learn about problems and we'd have to fix them. Congress just was, the Republicans were totally intransigent about fixing Nobody believes problems you, as, doctor. They, as they arose. 
We all watch this happen, and I'm sorry, you would have much more credibility if you would just say, you know, we were kind of wrong about some things. You can't keep your doctor. It's more expensive than we thought it was going to be. Healthy people have to subsidize it. Instead, Actually, you blame it's the not right more expensive than we thought it was going to be. Could you, show my, could you please vote. show my this slide, This is sad, Tucker. and I would expect more from someone Tucker, who's an Tucker, eminent doctor, Show honestly. my slide. Tucker, show, your show slide. the slide right. I gave you to put up here. Okay. Are you showing the I'm slide? I'm sorry. With there's the your slide right there. But it doesn't, okay. it doesn't mask your demagoguery, doctor. And you just blame the Republicans who had not one thing to do with this legislation, as you know. And you discredit yourself by doing that. And I'm trying to they take you seriously. They had a lot to do with it by their negative non-helpelfulness. Okay. On that graph, I'm sorry. it shows you right. what health care inflation has been and the fact that health care inflation has come way down because of, okay. uh, partially because of Obamacare. And okay. that difference between the two curves is $4,000 for a family. That's important okay. savings that are right. uh, ha the president made possible. In it's fact, the same he story. Did it's a great deal. You're just play. too dumb to get how great it is. I, I've heard this before. Thanks a lot, Doctor. I appreciate uh, your coming on. Thanks.